Bloodlines with the subtitle Race, Cross, and the Christian is um, a deeply personal book for me as well as a, a gospel-exalting book. Um, I, I felt like I have a debt to pay because of how racist and um, painfully evil I was as a teenager growing up in uh, the Jim Crow South. Um, so this book is, is partly a debt that I want to pay. I, I, I think I understand the nature of white guilt enough and have read enough uh, about it from Shelby Steele and others that it's not simply a, a poor um, 60-something white guy feeling rotten about his past and trying to make up. Uh, I think it's way more than that. It's knowing my past and knowing how much of sin is still there in me and lots of people that I want to address that then and now. It's a book that is uh, dense with the gospel and how the gospel not just addresses race uh, head on, but comes around behind and, and tackles uh, six or seven or eight, I think I've got nine in one chapter, uh, kinds of sinning that feed into making race a problem in our day. And one of the features of it that I, uh, that I hope will be powerful for Christians especially is that uh, racism is not primarily a social issue. It's primarily a blood issue um, because it says in Revelation 5, 9 that God has ransomed people from every tribe and tongue and people and nation and has made them a kingdom, one kingdom, priest to our God. And so all the races, all the peoples of the world, blood bought and unified around the cross. And therefore, if you love Christ, if you love the cross, if you love what the blood was poured out for, you can't be indifferent to the kind of tensions that there are ethnically around the world and that there are racially uh, even here at home still. And so I try to tackle those issues in this book and I, I pray that the Lord will use it to make his people more sensitive, more caring, more loving, more robust in their uh, love for trans racial, trans, ethnic togetherness in the church and outside.